wash it again. It just dripped off of the stick. Oh, so good. Nad's going to be co-host, so he'll help you. Good morning, everyone. We have one hymn in our bulletin. It's the communion hymn. It's a, going to be a video on the screen. The words will be on the screen, but, you might, but the notes won't be. So if you want to follow along, you can pull out a hymnal. It's hymn 410 in the hymnal. It, it, the words might not be exactly the same because this was recorded in Ireland, so the words might vary slightly than what we have. I didn't double-check the two, but essentially it'll be in, in the 410 in the hymnal. That's for the communion, the offertory hymn. The offertory hymn, I believe it is. And we'll begin in just a moment. It's our custom to wait until the church bells ring. They're supposed to ring at 10 o'clock, but it's about 10.03 when they actually ring. So as soon as they, as soon as they ring, we'll start. <laughs> we reset them, but they automatically go back to what they want to do. So we just let them, let them decide.
go ahead and start the prelude. It shouldn't have rung by now. stand as you are able. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One God, our creator, the love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. One God, one faith, one baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Lord be with you and also with you let us pray living God for whom no door is closed no heart is locked draw us beyond our fears help us to see the wounds of Christ's body as the wounds of this world help us to love as you love to heal the broken feed the hungry clothe the naked and all for your sake amen please be seated for the readings A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. Put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 
let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also, in, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared, he, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Please stand for the Alleluia verse in the Gospel. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head 
and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. On a hot August afternoon last summer, I was picking up some things at Lowe's when I walked past the garden center. There was a cart of discounted plants, dead and dying cart is what I call it, the dead and dying cart. And so I looked at it and I saw all these pathetic looking plants that were for sale for about three bucks. And so I decided to buy some. I figured for three bucks, even if I killed them all the way, it wouldn't be that much of a loss. So I bought some and I took them home thinking maybe I could revitalize them and maybe they would be okay. At the very least, they would die in a home environment and not the store. (laughs) So I bought four bromeliads, two orchids, orchids, and a couple of other really hardy low light plants that I figured those are really hard to kill. They'll probably make it. So then I transplanted all of them, put them in various places around the house that provide appropriate light for the kind of plant that they were. And I've watered them and tended them ever since. And I thought, well, I'll have, I'll have decent luck with those most hardy ones that were upstairs. The, the orchids I wasn't so sure about. I was pretty sure, like all the other orchids I've ever owned in my life, they would probably eventually just die. So, but I did some research and I read about them and, and actually everyone says they're really easy to care for. And I thought, how could that be? I can't, I can't keep them alive. <laughs> but nonetheless, I tried. I followed all these instructions and sure enough, they began to thrive. They got new leaves and then one of them, to my great surprise, around in February, developed three blossoms. I was stunned that it developed three blossoms and then about a month later, the blossoms bloomed And I was shocked. I was shocked that they bloomed. And they lived for about a month. And now those initial, initial, there were actually four of them that bloomed. The initial four have fallen off. And there are four more that are forming at the end of the stem. I am just stunned. The other orchid, there were two of them. The other orchid doesn't have blooms yet, but it's growing a stem that eventually will probably have blooms on it. And it's done something really rare, apparently. It's growing some new leaves way up on the stem. And those new leaves, when that happens with an orchid, apparently it's called a kikis, which is Hawaiian for baby. It's growing a baby orchid. And so when it forms roots, I can cut that baby orchid off and transplant it, and I'll have three orchids. (laughs) So I'm calling these my resurrection orchids because, because they bloomed right around Lent and Easter. So for me, the resurrection orchids. And so I'm really excited about them. I was so excited I had to paint them. You know, I'm not really a painter, but we've been studying Van Gogh all of Lent and and studying his art and his work and how he really immersed himself in the idea of painting as a way to engage in God in the ordinary, God in the everyday, God in people eating potatoes, God in people planting things. And so for me, painting is a way of sort of engaging in that same idea of the ordinary and yet, for me, something that is a way to be creative. Um, and I love playing with uh, colors and light, highlights and shading. So I decided to paint them. One of these will be donated to a fundraiser for faith walking. I think probably this one is going to faith walking. And that one I'll keep. Not sure. Uh, so the other thing is I painted the icon. Or you, you don't paint icons, you write them. So the Mary Magdalene icon up there is another uh, image that I have done. And I love painting or writing icons. The reason you write an icon is because an icon is the word 
of God in image form. And so you don't paint it, you write it. And so the word becomes, if you will, imaged. And so this is an image of Mary Magdalene. And she's holding, if you'll notice, maybe you can see, a red egg. There's a little red egg. Want to get a Halim so we can see it? Uh, do you, anybody, does anyone know why she's holding a red egg? Anyone know the story? Oh, Hel Helen knows. Oh, you want to know. You want to know. Okay. So, so the story goes like this. Uh, Mary Magdalene, um, after she, so here's the little red egg right there. Right there. So Mary Magdalene, after she, after the resurrection, she went to see the emperor Tiberius to tell him that Jesus, that actually the emperor had failed. Jesus was alive. He was resurrected. And the emperor was sitting at a table, and there are some eggs on the table with him. And he said, well, actually, if Jesus were resurrected, the egg on the table would turn red. And it promptly turned red. So that's the story. Thanks, Colleen. So that's the story of Mary with Magdalene with the red egg. It's very much a part of the, of the Eastern Orthodox tradition. So on Easter, you'll, if you ever watched the, my big fat Greek wedding, on Easter morning they're cracking red eggs. That's, what's, that's why they're doing it. And they say, Christus Anusta, whatever the Greek word is, right? So they're, hallelujah, he is risen. That's the red egg. And so the thing about Easter and about the resurrection well, it has this joyous occasion to it, and it symbolizes for us signs of new life. It's one of those mysteries that there is no really reasonable explanation for. It's just part of the cycle of life where things go from being winter and fallow and seemingly not alive, and yet lots is happening under the earth, and then into the new life when the resurrection comes. And so the, it's really intended to point us toward this deeper truth of the natural order of life and of the, of the creation and the nature of the creator, that life itself is a miracle. Out of the depths of winter, out of seasons of lying fallow, when nothing seems to be happening, new life is being formed. And so winter and darkness are really important. We often use them in ways that are pejorative and not helpful, but they are actually critical, darkness and winter, critical to the ongoing uh, life and creation because that's when new life is being for, uh, pr produced and created the conditions for new life. And then the spring, which we don't quite have yet, today as I was walking into church, I thought, this feels like Christmas. <laughs> it was cloudy, it was dark, it was cold. I thought, this is more like Christmas than Easter. But nonetheless, this is spring and Easter will be here. The Easter feeling springtime will be here soon. And so, so it is in our lives, in the life of this parish, the cycle of life Every single stage is critical. Times for lying fallow and fertile times of blooming. We're on the cusp of spring. We're on the cusp of new life. And after years of seeming as if we were dormant and literally dormant because of COVID, in many ways we seem to be dormant and maybe even dying, now things are beginning to come forth with new life. Like the orchids popping these surprising blooms Jesus leaving the tomb, Mary's egg turning red. There are signs of new life all around us. Let us give thanks. Alleluia. Alleluia. And then we're going to see a picture of Van Gogh's painting. So every week there was a painting of Van Gogh's. And so this week, or the last painting, it's the painting of a wheat field. For him, wheat fields were a sign. It's a wheat field with the storm clouds in the background. So he loved the contrast of life. And then also this, this sort of stormy background, the two uh, together. So you can read what it says on the screen. Please stand as you are able. We're going to, uh, the reaffirmation of our baptismal vows. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lent and observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism and to rededicate yourselves to the ministry God has given you. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in Even the, Holy the Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins, sins the, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. How will you come to know the presence and love of God in your lives? With God's help, I will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. How will you restore relationships when you find yourself separated from God, other persons, and the world around you? With God's help, I will persevere in resisting evil, and whenever I fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. How will you share your experience of God's steadfast love? With God's help, I will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. How will you enter into relationships with other persons? Seek and serve Christ. How will you transform the communities in which you live to become more like the kingdom of God? Well, I will strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of other human Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Filled with joy on this royal feast of feasts, let us offer prayers to God who leads his sons and daughters through the Red Sea waters. For the holy churches of God, Bonnie our bishop, our bishops, priests and deacons, for this holy gathering and all the holy people of God. And we pray today for the churches of the Diocese of Michigan, for Christ Church, for Christ the King in Taylor and St. James in Dexter. We pray for the churches of our companion Diocese of the Dominican Republic, Grace Church and Church of the Transfiguration. We pray for the world and its leaders our nation and its people. Glory and praise to you, O living God. We pray for all those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, the dying and the dead. And we pray today for those in need of healing, for Christopher and Abigail, Mark, Marshall, Frida, Janelle, Carolyn, Terry, Elaine, Norman, Anne, Sally, James, the Brown family, Carl, Michael, Lynn, Corey, Joanne, Joe, Jason, Avery and Grace, Barb, Sandra, Sam and Susan, Barb, Eladia, Anastasia. We pray for Michael, Karen, Hardy, Bill, Eleanor, Amanda, Lenny, Lena, Dolores, Robert, the Owens family. We pray for Alex, Lynn, Lana, Edith, Brandon, Noah, Danny, and family. We pray for Eric, JC, Chris, Mary Jo, Mary Ann, Edith, and Angie and family.
We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. That our Savior working in us may heal this broken world. Glory and praise to you, O living God. That with Christ we may overcome evil, restoring justice and compassion. That Christ may fill us with the joy and happiness of this holy resurrection that we may enter the chamber of the divine wedding feast and rejoice without limit with the angels and saints. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remember Mary, your faithful disciple, who bears love into the world. Remember all the saints. Let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for the gift of new life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we offer this holy day, and grant that we, who have received new life in baptism, may live forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also is you. So good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. It's great to see people and to be able to worship Easter Day in church with people here. It's been a few years since we've been able to do that, so it's exciting. Uh, just a couple of announcements. One, I want to really thank Manuela, who uh, offered music all through Lent, and particularly in Holy Week, she, she chose some really powerful pieces that really uh, accentuated the feeling and the tone of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday in particular. So thank you, Manuela, for your, your wonderful music. Yeah. And as you can tell, our, our hymns have been recorded with our choir. Many of them are here, so you get to sing along with yourselves. How often you get to do that, right? Accompanying yourself, <laughs> which is kind of fun. But we've decided for a while to keep pre-recording the music uh, so that we can uh, just keep monitoring what's happening with COVID and make sure that we are all staying safe. But so far, things we're hoping are going to continue moving towards a, a better place. Uh, but anyway, thank you to our choir for coming ahead of time to record that music. We have Carrie Dumas, who was playing the organ. And we have our choir members who were singing, and Matt Salmon, who's with us. He's joining us on Zoom. He's the co-host on Zoom, uh, who recorded all of it. So thank you, everyone, for that. Yeah. Now, coming up this week, we have a wedding on Friday, which is going to be very exciting. And then we also have, earlier on Friday, we have the Littlefield Action for Justice organization is doing a seed exchange on the plaza if the weather is nice. So if you're looking for seeds for your garden, if you have extra seeds, if you need seeds, come and do a seed exchange. There'll also be some learning opportunities that are being provided that day. So it's through our Intercultural Community Center. We're sponsoring them to come and have the seed exchange. So 11 to 1 on Friday after morning, afternoon, if you want to exchange seeds, come and join us for that. On Pentecost, which is June 5th, so that's the end of the Easter season on June 5th, we're t tentatively planning a one-service Christ Church Mother of the Savior bilingual service outside of for Lucky Manuela will be playing. We're trying to get the uh, Maples Elementary School drumming band to come. We want to, if, so I haven't worked that out yet, but we're, we're, we're in conversation. We're going to bless the community garden. We're going to bless, we've now moved the Pet Memorial Garden. It's in its new location. So we're going to bless those two sites and have a little picnic. God willing, the weather will be nice and we'll all still be healthy. So that's the tentative plan. So walk in love as Christ loves us. This is the place where you might want to get your hymnal for a 
hymn 410 if you want to sing along with it, or you can read the words on the screen. stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God praise and thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he's won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Bless the name, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death. You and your mercy send Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is the risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, 
that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. For those who are worshiping with, worshiping with us on Facebook Live and Zoom, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In you know God with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus. Let us never be separated from you. May you live in us. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we, are, we now pray. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover, a sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia the gifts of God for the people of God. So coming, coming forward, if you brought your chalice with you, everyone has their own chalice, please bring it. If not, we have some extra ones. Probably need to share them as couples and families though. You might not have enough for every individual person. Okay, okay now the communion hymn. Jesus Christ.
hablar de Paul Lord Jesus Christ. Hablando de Paul Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, blood of our Lord. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Please stand as you are able for the post-communion prayer. Which you will find on page 10. Let us pray. Blessed by God, who calls us together, nourishing us with the spiritual food of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may nourish the world with acts of justice and mercy. Praise, Praise to, to God. God. May we and offer all, all that we are and, and become, become all that we are meant to be, a people united in the beauty of our diversity. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life and bring life to others. Praise, Praise to, to God, God who, who has revealed us love. Keep us steady in the hope you have set before us, so that the whole earth shall live fully, whole and healthy lives, to the praise of your name. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ for those to whom Christ shall send you, 
And the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love as God's love has been revealed to us in Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And I invite you to be seated if you wish for the postlude.
Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a great day. Have a, gr a good Easter. Have a great week. Take care. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Thanks, Matt, for helping.